The Johnson Wax Program, with Ted Wayne's orchestra, and starring Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> opens the show with this year's kisses. Try Johnson's self polishing glow coat on your floors and linoleum. You'll be so enthusiastic, you'll be telling all your friends about this wonderful, no rubbing floor polish. Glow coat makes floors shine like new, keeps linoleum looking fresh and bright, and saves hours of floor cleaning time. Dirt and dust can't cling to the beautiful polished surface, and glow coat is so easy to use. It dries in 20 minutes and shines as it dries without any work of rubbing or buffing. If you want to have lovely, clean floors that everyone will admire, order Johnson's self-polishing glow coat tomorrow from your dealer. Glow coat is made by the makers of Johnson's Wax, floor finishing authorities for more than 50 years. Fibber has a new hobby, gardening. But before he really gets into it, he'd like to discuss it pro and con with some other enthusiasts. So, in a friendly attempt to find a congenial spirit, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, friends, with your kind permission, I'm going to ask a few of you to step up here to the microphone and give the folks listening in some idea of your hobby. Mine, I might add, is gardening. Uh, madam, would uh, would you mind stepping up here to the microphone? No? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on up. Harpo will hold the baby for you. Come on. <laughs> no? Oh, come on. Well, all right. Uh, brother, you in the second row there, will you come up on the platform? That's it. Now, now just talk into the microphone here. A little closer. Fine. Now... Now, uh, will you please tell us, sir, if you have a hobby of any kind? Uh, such as gardening? Well, uh, I knit. What? <laughs> you what? Uh, did you say you nap, bud? Uh, yes, that's right. I knit. <laughs> what is your name, please? O'Shea. O teardrop, F A T A, O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, teardrop? <laughs> oh, well. You know, I always think of an apostrophe as little teardrop, don't you? Oh, do tell. <laughs> well, I can't say it how it's ever exactly occurred to me that way, bud. So you're a knitter, eh? What do you knit? Oh, everything. Socks. Socks, mittens, sweaters, and stuff. <laughs> I crochet, too, and tat. Yeah, tat a boy. Uh, what do you expect to do with your knitting, Mr. O'Shea? Oh, I hope to open a knitting shop sometime. I'm going to call it O'Shea's Crochet Shop. Uh. <laughs> How about the Shays O'Shea? Kind of a slogan like this. Crochet? Okay. Sashay away to the Shays O'Shea. Uh. Goody, that's ducky. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just for that, I'm going to knit you a pair of mittens for your gardening. Oh, don't do it. He's clumsy enough barehanded. <laughs> Much obliged, bud. Did you uh, did you ever uh, uh, consider gardening as a hobby yourself? Me? I mm -hmm. should say not. Oh. Bugs on the roses and bees in your hair and mud on your knees, that's all you get. I think it's stupid. Well, if you'll excuse me. Oh, well, yeah. certainly you'll excuse me. <laughs> you have got bugs in his bonnet. <laughs> uh, well, uh... Now, try to pick out a garden this time. Well, now, there's a familiar face. The foreign-looking gentleman in the third row, please. Oh, yes. uh, What is your name, sir? Uh, a little closer to the microphone, please, Doc. Okay, Tavari. Uh, a little farther away from the mic, please. <laughs> there. Now, what was the name again? 
What difference is name making to you? When we just, uh... Don't Rose by any other name would smell pretty good, too. My name is Nicholas Nikolovna Nikolai Nikolaevich. <laughs> Handle this guy carefully, Molly. He's full of the old Nick. <laughs> Have you a hobby, sir? What is that, Babushka? What is hobby B? A hobby, vodka, is a sideline. Something you do for personal enjoyment. For your own happiness. For my own happiness, Savari, I am doing nothing. Oh. Happiness is for bumblebells. Intelligent people is not for being happy. I wish to suffer. Oh. You wish to suffer, eh? Well, I thought... <laughs> I think that can be arranged, but... Uh, but didn't you ever walk out into a garden as the dew was gleaming on the tender little bud of a rose? A lovely rose. Roses are also for bumblebell Savari. I cannot suffer with roses. Ah, oh, well, you can always stick yourself with a thorn if you want to be like that. <laughs> now you're talking, Babushka. I think you're having something there. Excuse me, please. I think I'm going back to listen to Rasta's program. Why, bud? What's your hurry? I wish to suffer. I <laughs> <laughs> Happiness is for dumbbells. Well, uh, you should be practically in a state of ecstasy, McGee. Why? Well, never mind now. Uh, will the gentleman with the spectacles step up to the microphone, please? Oh, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, now then, bud, uh... What is your hobby? Stamps. Postage stamps? What other kind of stamps are there? Well, there's, uh, there's, there's well, uh... So you collect postage stamps, do you? <laughs> yes. Well, that must be very interesting. Yes. <laughs> I suppose you learn a lot about history and geography and stuff, studying stamps, eh, bud? Yes. You been collecting them long? Yes. Uh, does it take a lot of your time? Yes. <laughs> If you ever got tired of stamps, Bud, would you ever think of taking up some other hobby, such as, uh, as well, uh, maybe gardening? No. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a point, too, Bud. <laughs> but uh, think of what it means to get into closer touch with nature, to feel that you're responsible for each little sprout that peeps through the earth in the springtime. Wouldn't that give you a kind of a thrill? No. Well, uh, what would? Stamps. <laughs> well, thanks, Bud. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you very much, Bud, for that very interesting discourse on stamps. I'm sure we all realize what a lot of enjoyment and... Where are you going, Molly? I'm going down and sit next to that Russian gentleman. Why? I'm going to help him suffer. Oh, no. Hey, wait a minute. Perry Como is going to sing. Oh, well, in that case, I'll stay right here, McGee. By a campfire, dreaming I see you near me, hanging here by a campfire, hoping that you may hear me. Darling, I spend this hour with you in smoke green here by a campfire, dreaming your clothes this time. Just smoke dreams. In smoke dreams. Just 
didn't find any gardening enthusiast, but he isn't easily discouraged. So here in the front yard at 79 Wistful Vista, we find Fibber McGee and Molly with seeds, prowls, spades, rake, gardening books, seeds, scissors, seeds, and more seeds. McGee, you've got enough seeds here to cultivate the Imperial Valley. What's the idea of getting so many? Well, Chuck, who am I to stint nature? <laughs> you know the old poem, Molly? Spring scatters with a lavish hand. Uh, head cold through our lovely land. <laughs> well, uh, that ain't what I had in mind, but... Uh, hey, get out of there. Shoot! See you there. That dreaded egg popper sneak up behind me and eat the seeds before they hit the ground. Well, they have to eat, don't they? Well, they don't have to eat at my expense. That guy next door don't keep his poultry at home. I'll report him to the Secret Service. Secret service. Well, I got these seeds from our congressman, so it's federal business. Oh, <laughs> Hand me that big trowel there, will you, Molly? This one here? No, no, no. That big one. That's it. That isn't a trowel, eager enough. That's a shovel. <laughs> I know, but you can't call a spade a spade on the radio. <laughs> Where'd I better plant this baby's breath? Ah, oh, baby's breath. Oh, isn't that a sweet name for a flower? Never mind the sentiment, Molly. Where'll I put them? You know, McGee, I think it'd be just darling to plant the baby's breath right between the mums and the poppies. <laughs> this, this is just a small garden, not a nursery. Now, let's see. I think I'll put the calliopsis next to the zinnias and the lady slippers next to the bachelor's button. What? And, and start a scandal? <laughs> you know, Molly, I'll bet I'll have the prettiest garden in all of the world. Pat, Pat, get out of here! <laughs> By the way, McGee, what's in this envelope? There's no picture or printing on it. Oh, those seeds? Oh, them's daisies. Well, how do you know? They won't tell. Oh. I think you're planting this stuff too early, McGee. Why, it's almost five o'clock. No, I mean the season, foolish. Oh, no, I know what I'm doing, Molly. Why, shucks, at one time, I was the champion gardener of Michigan. Oh, dear. Calla Lily McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, my. Calla Lily McGee, the colossal cultivator of captivating carnations... Clean-cut contriver of colorful calopsis, cute coaxer of chrysanthemums, and King Kong of Kalamazoo cabbage flowers. <laughs> Hand me some more of them seeds, Molly. <laughs> what kind of seeds are these? Shake the package. Hi ho, everybody. <laughs> I thought so. Rudy to the valley. Well, <laughs> now let's see. Say, hurry up, McGee. It's real chilly out here. I'll bet your plants freeze tonight. No, sir. The almanac says warmer and fair. The almanac in the kitchen? Yeah. That's for 1922. Well, these seeds don't know that. I always thought... But... Say, aren't you planting these seeds pretty deep? Oh, I don't know. i got to give them time to grow because they ain't picked till the 4th of July. The 4th of July? Sure. Well, what are they? Punk. <laughs> ah, you mean pink. Oh, that's what it is. I thought it says punk. Oh, well, hand me them seeds there. Oh, here's the ones I like. Candy stuff. Yes, and it's kind of tough on your floors and linoleum not to protect them with oh. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Harpo. Oh, hello, folks. Say, what are you doing? Oh, dear. What are we doing? What does it look like we're doing? Feeding your chicken. Our chi hey, get out of here! Dad's got to feed it! <laughs> we're planting a garden, Mr. Wilcox. No. You know, flowers and... Vegetables. Yeah, and listen, Harpo, we're pretty busy. Now, you better run along and work in your own garden. How did you know I was working in my garden? You got a kind of a seedy look. Okay, okay. You know, Molly, I heard that guy build a shack just to plant his floor de lis again. Why? Yeah. Somebody told him they were shanty iris. <laughs> Say, McGee, how is this garden soil? Have you had it analyzed to see if it's fertile? I had it tested the other day. How did it test? 100%. 100% what? 100% dirt. Oh. <laughs> The book here says soil can be improved upon by adding a two-inch layer of equal parts of sand and peat moss. Peat moss? Who's he? <laughs> Probably the guy that wrote the book. Hello, folks. Oh, Ted Wayne. Hi, Ted. Hello, Ted. What are you doing? What are we doing? <laughs> oh, well, confidentially, Ted, we're, we're laying the keel for a new submarine for the Navy. <laughs> well, what are all the seeds for? Naval oranges. 
keeps the crew from getting scurvy. Well, let me take a handful. My first violinist is getting scurvier all the time. <laughs> Say, have you got a hobby, Ted? Sure, I've got a hobby. What is it? Not gardening. <laughs> well, uh, what is it? Uh, what is your hobby? That's it. Not gardening. I hate gardening. What? I think gardening is the silliest thing there is. Rubbing around the dirt from morning to night. For what? So three months later, you can pick a handful of major looking tulips and a few undersized radishes. Gardening. Boy. Hey. <laughs> what? We. When you say that, play. Gentlemen, we interrupt this program for a special announcement. Commencing next Monday night, April 12th, Fibber McGee and Molly will be heard at 9 o'clock Eastern and 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. This will be one hour later than heretofore. Thank you. Back to 79 Wistful Vista, where Fibber and Molly are still working in their garden. Oh, sure. You know what you're uh, going to have to get for your garden, McGee? What's that? A weeder. A weeder? Yes, for weeding. The Uncle Dennis was a great weeder. <laughs> What's he been weeding lately? Oh, uh, he's been weeding a lot of womances, the woe to womb, and whittle went wide and hard. And... <laughs> well, I'll have to come over and weed them while I weed my harvest next fall. Yeah. Uh, at a... Ted, Ted, get out of here. Ted. <laughs> Say, I know what we ought to have in the garden, McGee. What? A bird bath. I think a bird bath is lovely in the garden. Oh, no, you don't. No bird baths in my garden. No, sir. Well, it's heavenly days. Why not? I think they're sweet. No, sir. Not whatever. What, not what after happened to my brother, Zan. No, sir. Zan had a pretty bitter experience that way. What happened? Well, Chuck, Zan had a swell <laughs> garden, and he thought a bird bath would be nice, just like you. A bird bath just like me. <laughs> no, I mean, he, he thought just like you that a bird bath would look kind of hot to top in his garden, so he built one. Who did? Zan. That's my brother, Alexander. Oh. <laughs> well, sir, he built this gorgeous bird bath in a nice spirit of humanity and with the love of wild creatures in his heart. And what do you suppose happened? What did happen? Why, well, Chuck. He went out one morning, and the dad ratted thing had run over and flooded the whole garden. Them fool birds had went off and left the water running. Oh. <laughs> what are these seeds here, Molly? Well, imagine that, McGee. They're wax beans. Did you say wax beans? Oh, I tell, old fellow, and if you've been waxing with anything but Dawson's, you just honk oh. down. Our <laughs> You know, you're beginning to get in my seat. <laughs> If you butt in again, I'm going to be kind of furious. Oh, there are furies at the bottom of our garden. Well, gee, I didn't mean any harm. Can't I watch you plant something? Why, certainly. Can't you, McGee? Well, Harpo, I'll tell you. You watch me plant something, and then I'll watch you plant something. How's that? Well, go ahead. Okay, now what? See? I make a little hole in the ground with the trowel. Can trowel or distrowel? Trowel. Trowel, Mr. Wilcox. If there was a litter of shovels, this would be the run. No, oh, I think. All right, go ahead, Pepper. Then I take this little crooked seed. And what does the little crooked seed grow into? Bent grass. <laughs> I drop the seed in the earth. Mm. A lot of iron in this soil. <laughs> <laughs> then I cover it up, see? Now it's your turn, Harpo. Oh, gee, that's swell. Now what do I plant? You plant one foot in front of the other. That way. Oh, all I wanted to do was watch it down there. What was I talking about? Well, what difference does it make? You know, Molly, I'd I like to work with old... Hey, get out of here! Beat it! Ram! Dead, breaded chickens anyway. Mickey, quit chasing those chickens. Come back here. Where are you going, dearie? I'm going to see this guy next door here. I've had enough of this. Yes? Uh, what was it, please? Uh, you the lady of the house, sis? Yes. Are these your chickens? Yes, they are. Well, uh, do you mind if I ask you a favor? Uh, your chickens are awful fond of the seeds I'm trying to plant. Yes. So I think maybe if I plant them in your yard here, the chickens won't have to walk so far for their lunch. <laughs> yeah. You see, we'll... Hmm. 
Chuck, she hung up on me. <laughs> She's probably in a hurry to catch Elmo Tanner whistling April showers. <laughs> Molly tells me she has something she wants to say to you, and she really seems serious about it. I know you're as interested as I am in what she has to say, so, Molly, we're listening. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you to all you friends who've been so loyal to McGee and I. Uh, we like to get your letters, and we certainly appreciate it when you tell us that you use blow coat on your floor. Now, every time you go to the store and ask for Johnson's self-polishing blow coat, you're not only getting a wonderful floor polish that's going to save you all kinds of work, but you're also showing our sponsor that you like our radio program and, and uh, you want it to stay on the air. So again, let me thank you most sincerely and say that I hope we'll all be together for a long, long time. Well, there's uh, just time left for me to remind you that you save money by ordering glow coat in the larger sizes. Look for the attractive yellow can with the lettering G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. Well, the scene remains the same, but it's two weeks later. Fibber has gone over the ground with a fine-tooth rake, but there's nary a sprout in sight. A little worried, he is sent for an agricultural expert, and the expert is expected any minute. I don't know what I've done wrong, Molly. They ought to be coming up by this time. Well, maybe you planted the seeds upside down. <laughs> Chuck, I ain't that dumb. <laughs> Let's see. I put the zinnies over about here and the asters. Where did I put the asters, Molly? Well, I don't know, but I hope it was a prominent place. An aster is used to the best, you know. Well, I hope this expert that's coming can give us the right dope, though I probably know more about it than he does. Oh, sure. sure. Hey there, little girl. Hey there. Don't step in the road. Hmm? I says, don't step in the road. What road? I don't see a road. Not a road. The road. The roads of plants. I planted flowers here. Mm, I don't see any flowers, Rebecca. <laughs> you don't, eh? <laughs> you don't see any flowers, Molly. <laughs> of course you don't, sis. They're just seeds now. They they grow up into flowers. You hope. <laughs> <laughs> you see, sis, the seeds are like little eggs. Mother Nature gets them warm and hatches them out, and they grow up to be nice, strong narcissuses and stuff. You see? <laughs> mm -hmm. Get a load of the expression on that sweet little face, Molly. That egg and Mother Nature stuff was a new thought to her. Did you catch on to the idea, sis? Hmm? I says, did you grasp the idea of Mother Nature hatching out all them tiny little seedlings so they'd grow up into beautiful little flowers and parsnips and stuff? I bet you I did, I bet. <laughs> ah, that's fine, sis. But when you get a little older, mister... You'll find out it's just the action of the solar rays combined with the expansion of moisture within the seed that causes them to grow. <laughs> I tell you, that's how it is. So, listen, don't let anybody kid you with that egg stuff. So long. Imagine her telling me what makes the flowers grow. Hey, Molly. 
Who's that coming up the street? Well, maybe it's that seed expert. What? In spats and a derby? Why, if he's a farm expert, I'm a ballet dancer. Well, up on your toes, then. Here he comes. <laughs> this is 79, Whistle Vista. That's right, bud. Are you the expert on agriculture? Mr. McGee. Uh, Mr. McGee. Yes. That's us, mister. Mm -hmm. All right. I am J. Aldington Tump, the seed expert. How do you do, I'm sure? Hi, W. <laughs> you don't look much like a farmer. I'm not a farmer. I'm a Ph.D., M.A., S.T.D., B.S. in geology, botany, physical geography, and plant engineering of the agricultural universities of Cornell, Berlin, and Warsaw. <laughs> Heavenly days. All that just to see why our crocuses won't come up. <laughs> well, let's get down to brass tacks, W. Uh, what's the matter with this garden? Well, just a moment now until I adjust this microscope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, will you hand me a small pinch of soil, please? Oh, take a handful, bud. We got lots of it. Uh, no, no, no. I want to analyze it. Here, uh, Mr. Stump. Thank you. <laughs> very, very interesting. <laughs> if you see any seeds in that dirt, bud, how do they look? Unhappy? <laughs> you know, this, this soil, Mr. McGee, is intensely interesting. It has a large proportion of volcanic ash, probably a residual basin of the Carboniferous era. Ooh. No, really? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't the stuff grow? Yeah, don't don't rush the professor, Molly. He's on the track or something. How about it, Prof? Sir, I shall do my very best to explain away any botanical incongruities or geological perplexities which may be troubling you. Well, that's fine. You can also tell us why this stuff won't come up. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, just just a moment. Uh, ah, what's the matter? Who planted these seeds? Why, me husband. Why? Uh, well, uh, excuse me, madam, but I, I should like to speak to your husband a moment about this. It's rather peculiar situation. Why, certainly. Go right ahead. Uh, what is it, bud? Uh, excuse us a minute, Molly. Uh, 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 what? Yes. No. Yes. Well, for the... Why? Why, I can't believe... Well, uh, well uh, no. <laughs> well, well, gee... Well, but I certainly appreciate it. it was... Well, we, we'd never have known it if it hadn't been for you. Uh, you send me a bill for your services. Yes, I shall do that, sir. Good day, sir. Good, uh, good day. day. Good day, Mr. Expert. Now then, McGee, what did he say was the matter? Oh, nothing. McGee. Well, he just says it was... Well, it's kind of a personal matter, Molly. I, I really wish you wouldn't ask. McGee, you tell me before I stir a foot outside this garden, what did he say? <laughs> oh, shucks, he just says... <laughs> he, he just says... Well, it seems I forgot to take the seeds out of the envelope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we give you a preview of the typical American family next Monday night, April 12th, at the dinner table. Mama, may I be excused now? No, not now. Not till you finish your pudding. But I can't. I gotta go. I want to hear Fibber McGee and Molly. No, darling, you can finish your dessert. Fibber McGee and Molly are on one hour later. On the farm. Looky here, Belle. Seen this article about hog calling? Oh, land sakes, I ain't got time to do no reading. I'm just about ready to tune in Fibber McGee and Molly on the radio. Well, dog, take it, Belle. Ain't you heard? They're on one hour later. In a taxi. Oh, man, hurry. What's holding us off? I can't do nothing about this traffic. Where's the fire? Tell you, I've got to hurry. I want to get to my home to my radio. I want to hear Fibber McGee and Molly. All that will just keep your seat, mister. It's one hour later. Where is that thing, anyway? Say, McGee, what on earth are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for a broom and a dustpan. Let's see. I saw... What on earth do you want a broom and a dustpan for? Well, you know, we move out of this time next week, and... I want to leave it just as nice and fresh as we found it when we moved in. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin. Heard on the program tonight this year's kisses from on the avenue and bubbling over from Wake Up in the Air. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. Fibber McGee and Molly will appear in person at the Plum Theater, Streeter, Illinois, Saturday, April 10th, WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. <laughs> 